Um, as someone who represents Washington State, I spend about 11 hours a week on an airplane, and uh, it gives me a lot of time to, to get reading done. And I have actually had a chance to read Rise Above, Rising Above the Gathering Storm uh, and, uh, and the sequel, uh, Rising Above the Gathering Storm Revisited, or as I like to call it, The Empire Strikes Above the Gathering Storm. Um, <laughs> But uh, those reports um, drew some conclusions that are really important to the future of our country. What both of these reports have said point blank is that the U.S. needs to increase its investment in basic research to compete. The original America Competes legislation that was born out of these reports set a clear and distinct goal. It said to be competitive, based on uh, the rising above the gathering storm, we should set a goal of doubling the funding for basic research and development within seven years to, and, and uh, uh, put us on a path to have completely doubled by 2020. The competes legislation that was passed in 2010 took a step uh, a, a little away from that goal um, and said let's try to double basic research by, uh, within 11 years. And unfortunately, the bill we are considering today uh, goes back further, not keeping up with the rate of inflation. You know, while our country's uh, fiscal situation has certainly changed since 2007, I believe that failing to prioritize investments in basic research is a mistake, a mistake that could eventually cost our country's competitive position in the global marketplace. Other nations are not sitting still. You know, China has multiplied fivefold its number of students in research universities over the last decade. You know, I joined uh, some of my uh, fellow New Democrats on this committee and put together a set of principles that we believe would be fundamental to a 2013 competes reauthorization. We met with countless academic and industry stakeholders, and, uh, and all of them agreed on these principles for innovation and told us that we need to get, uh, get going, to be doing more to foster scientific uh, growth, not moving backwards. In hopes of repeating the bipartisan spirit of the original competes and its reauthorization, we sought to work across the aisle to find common ground on a bill that would advance scientific research. Um, unfortunately, that, that uh, so far has, has uh, not been the case, and now we are left considering a bill that the scientific community does not support and industry warned us not to pursue. The amendment I have submitted uh, represents the compromise that we were working toward, a, uh, an increase in the top line numbers of 3.5 percent, an extension in the authorization to 2016 to provide some greater certainty uh, uh, to our researchers, and the removal of the directorate by directorate funding. Uh, this, along with the policy changes, including Section 115, the misrepresentation of research results, preserving the existing internal investigation process in NSF and the inclusion of critical innovation programs are changes that many of us believe could have marked a bipartisan compromise. As it stands, the first act is just not enough to advance our national innovation agenda. You know, following Sputnik, uh, America woke up uh, to what was perceived as an existential threat to our country. And while uh, uh, when we wake up today, frankly, we are facing a daily threat, perhaps not to our existence, but certainly to our economic future. As Bill Gates from my state uh, recently said, where is Sputnik when we need it? The 21st century arms race isn't about scrambling for weapons of war. It's about competing strategically for brains and for innovation. Paul Ottolini uh, of Intel said, without a change in Federal research policy, the next big thing will not be invented here. Jobs will not be created he here, and wealth will not accrue here. As I have said uh, since the beginning of our work on competes reauthorization, we need to step up our game or as a nation we are going to get our backsides handed to us. We need to do better, and that is the rationale behind this amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Uh, the amendment I am offering uh, would reauthorize the Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship and the Regional Innovation Program, both established in the American Competes Act of 2010. My amendment would strengthen the Office of Innovation and Entre Entrepreneurship by giving the office a full-time director and staff and by requiring the office to develop a comprehensive strategic plan. It would also clarify the role of the office's advisory committee and have them provide recommendations on improving the office. In addition to improving the Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, my amendment reauthorizes the Regional Innovation Program. Uh, as uh, my colleague Representative Holtgren mentioned earlier, the Regional Innovation Program provides needed support to innovative initiatives that accelerate technology, commercialization, job creation, and economic growth throughout the United States. 
This is an important uh, effort because it acknowledges that job creation doesn't happen in large marble buildings in our nation's capital, but rather actually happens in our regions throughout the country. Efforts to further implement regional innovation clusters throughout our country are supported by groups from the Brookings Institute to the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation, ITIF. In fact, reauthorizing the regional innovation program was on ITIF's list of 25 recommendations for the reauthorization of the America Competes Act. ITF's recommendations suggested that this important program should be authorized at the level of at least $100 million a year, and my amendment would do that. I would just stress that this program actually creates jobs and increases revenues for States and for the Federal Government. The payback will be many times our initial investment. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time. 